Hello, dear Voyagers. In this episode, we talked with Molly Frank, aka Miss Molly Knows. She is a psychic medium, a finder of lost items, and she chatted with us from her boat on the ocean. She is an absolute queen. I'm Lauren Leon. And I'm Frank. And we are a married couple learning how to develop our own intuition. And this is episode 51 of Claire Voyaging. Wayfeather Media presents Claire Voyaging. Hello. Hi. What's going on, everybody? Hope you are all feeling fancy and fun. Fancy and fun. This is the week after Halloween and the week of a bunch of fun. That is exactly what I was going to say. Just why not? Make it that way. Yeah. Guys, we've got a great episode. Miss Molly knows she's fantastic. Oh, and does she know? She knows. She does. She knows. Yeah. But first, we want to thank uh, someone for buying us some coffees. And that's Adrian, our pal, Adrian. Adrian bought us some coffees. Yeah. Yes. Adrian. What a what a pal. You didn't have to Adrian from from the Halloween episode. Yeah. Ah, uh, thanks, dude. She's she's the best. Um, if you want to buy us some coffees, hop on over to buymeacoffee.com slash clairvoyaging. Also, if you want to be a member of our Patreon, get access to some fun little videos and music. Extra content extra from the content, episodes. Wait, photos. Uh, Lauren, I can't how much how much is it? Again? It's four dollars per month. Oh my god, that's so cheap. Also, guys, I just want to say that. Five star reviews and telling your friends about our podcast just helps our little show. If you think even if it's just one episode that you feel like this will resonate with one of my friends or my family member, that's how we get them. Give them. Get, get, that's it, how we hook them. Boot it to them and boot it to them. Yeah. Give it the punt in their direction. It's in your hands now. He's saying weird words that don't make sense. I don't sports. <laughs> boot it to them. I don't. Give throw the uh, give him a lateral podcast <laughs> toss. You're not a sports guy. I played sports, and that's okay. I just my brain doesn't think in it. Boot it to them, okay? Mm-mm. It's a new <laughs> clear watching saying. Hey, hey, what else? That's it. That's it. We're gonna get right to the episode now, guys. The, wait, Her real name quick, is Molly. Real quick, the the pod our, the pod is Claire Voyaging, Claire Voyaging, and she's on a boat. How cool is this? Have you thought about this? I haven't. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. I got to tell you, uh, I think it's very cool that she lives on the boat. Um, Truly, there was a moment when I said during the episode that I was getting seasick. I was on the boat with her. The And I started feeling a little bit uh, like uneasy. It's not like her camera was moving. I know. I was mentally there. Claire sentience, right? I don't know, man. I felt seasick just thinking about it. You know what? When I go when when someone starts talking about a big roller coaster and it has a huge drop and stuff, when how do I go? My hands are sweating because I'm thinking about it. Don't I say that? I just don't know if this ties into psychic abilities. This is, uh, you can't just say it's, it's clear sentience. It's I don't em- know. Well, <laughs> it's it, not clear sentience. That was a joke. Let's, but, let's yeah. take a clear drama me and get to the pod. Yeah. All right. Molly Miss, Frank. Miss Molly, Miss Molly knows. knows. Great last name. She, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The best. The best, the best name. <laughs> um, she's awesome. She, her story is the Mr. Streever story from our episode 50, our happy, happy Halloween episode. Happy, happy Halloween. <laughs> and so if you, if you listen to that and if, if you didn't, she kind of references, we reference it a couple of times. There's no updates about it, but um, we do reference it. So if you haven't heard that and you want to know what we're talking about, go listen to episode 50. Come jump on the boat. Come jump on the boat. Join us on a voyage. Throw that, that Claire Dramamine on. <laughs> Take the tr- take the Claire Dramamine pills. Yeah, you don't need it. Lauren's weird. Anchor anchors away. Anchor on the the moor. The ball bo- mo- bo- go on the starboard. Ooh. And hop on the oh boat. Oh my god! Get on the boat. Roll the tape. Anchors away. 
Bon Voyage. Molly, a.k.a. Miss Molly Knows. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we love to hear people's backstories. So a lot of our listeners have heard your your book, The Story of Mr. Strever. Um, mm-hmm. But you said you didn't know you were psychic yet or you you weren't comfortable with it yet. So can we hear a bit of your backstory? Sure. How'd you get here? Um, when, yeah. So about five years ago, I would say was my great awakening, so to speak. Uh, I had abilities my entire life. When I was three years old, I drowned in my grandmother's pool <gasps> and I had a near death out of body experience. After that, I started to see spirits and communicate with them. And uh, as a child, you know, of course, parents think you have an imaginary friend and your imagination's running wild and all these things. Yeah. And as you get a little bit older, then it's what's wrong with Molly? Who is she talking to? Why does she think there's things in the room? Why is she screaming in the middle of the night or jumping up and running around, you know, from a dead sleep? And my parents took me to many doctors uh, thinking something might be wrong. And eventually it wore off. But really what happened was I became very aware of that. It wasn't something that everybody else could see or understand. And so I stopped talking about it. Wow. And I started to bury it, which is not an uncommon thing at all. Yeah. That is very, very common amongst people with abilities. Or I like to say enhanced abilities because truthfully, everybody has. Um, and so that was most of my life. You know, on and off things happen through my life. And, you know, luckily I journaled pretty um faithfully since my 20s. So I did write a lot of things down that I honestly don't remember now. Uh, But about five years ago, it started to kind of ramp up. And I was going through a lot of things in my life. I had an injury. I was on disability. I was in a very bad relationship. Um, I was in pain and a lot of other things going on. So kind of like, it seems like, and then COVID hit, of course. (laughs) So it was like all of these things at the same time, pretty much. And that's kind of where I think a lot of people came into their abilities more because they had time to research and time to explore and think about what their life meant and, you know, those sorts of things. And so it became quite apparent that I couldn't avoid it anymore. I'd always had interest in it and so forth. But like I said, um, about five years ago, it became more where I couldn't ignore it anymore. And unfortunately, as far as I know, nobody in my family had the same ability. And so I didn't have anybody to bounce it off of. A lot of people go, oh, my grandma used to read tea leaves or my mother was, you know, I didn't have anybody. So it was kind of like I had to, I was on my own. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So that's, that's the story. I mean, and, and a lot of it's been experimentation and just trying things, you know, every, most of the things that I do, I, I didn't really know exactly what I was doing. I just thought, well, I'll try it. If it doesn't work, I won't do it anymore. And that's why I have a lot of unusual things that we do. And there were some things that I haven't even mentioned to you that we've done in the past also on some of my lives that are very unusual. Um, and there's more and more things coming around. So I, I got a lot of cool stuff coming up. <laughs> when you start, when, when things started ramping up for you, um, did you start like trying to figure out, you know, what kind of development do I need to go to and stuff like that? Right. Well, I had never hung around a lot of woo woo people, mm-hmm. so I didn't developing psychic i didn't know the difference between a psychic and a medium and channeling and you know i knew what tarot cards were i had the same set of tarot cards i swear to you for about 30 years i never touched them <laughs> really i never had them yeah. and then, so pull out, well, i would look at them and i go i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> and then about i don't know, like four years ago i was house sitting in california I, I mostly lived in california most of my life i was house sitting for some friends and i was as i mentioned to you i was on disability this was right from the COVID era and uh, I knew that I was going to have to go back to work at some point. And so before I went to bed, I literally said out loud, like, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do now with my life, but I hate working for other people. I want to use abilities and skills and talents that I have to help other people and also be able to, to make a living doing that. And I went to bed. Next morning, I wake up and I suddenly just in my mind thought, I got to get cards. And I found a nearby metaphysical store. I bought a basic set of tarot cards. I came home and it's like I, I had a system all of a sudden on how to read them. I don't know where it came from or Ooh. why. <laughs> and apparently my system is not that far off of what a lot of other people use. Uh, but I learned how to use the numbers and the suit and the pictures to put stories together. And next thing I knew, I was putting up a, a Instagram channel. And then one day out of a whim, I went on TikTok and it turned out to be the thing. TikTok was my main platform. Wow. So, uh, and how it happened. It was just like, it was just an urge. Yeah. 
So as far as yeah. development goes now, like, where are you? What can you do? What are, what are your things? Well, I what really don't love labels very much. Sure. And, you know, when I hear people saying I'm a developing medium or I'm a developing psychic, how could you not be developing? You're <laughs> right. always developing. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. you're never going to stop developing. If you do, you're not really doing what your, what your life's work is to do. Right. Yeah. Uh, the development is always knowing that everything has a reason in your life to lead you towards the next thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so I guess I, I did go to a channeling workshop, not understanding that channeling is a little different than mediumship. It, it is a form of mediumship, I guess you could say, but it's different. And upon doing so, I met someone who I wouldn't call him a mentor, but he definitely gave me a lot of good insight. I learned that part of it is just believing that you know that you know, which is my slogan, know that you know. Mm. And once you start to believe everything that comes to you isn't just a thought, isn't just a flying, you know, fly by whim or happenstance, it, it starts to make sense. And really, that's, that's a big part of it, I think. Um, I have a lot of colleagues on social media that I've learned from. I've taken some classes from some of my, some people you've even interviewed yeah. uh, here and there. I don't always love sitting in a class i have a very short attention span <laughs> so that's not always the best form for me uh -huh. however i will say no matter what you do even if you take a class or read a book or watch a video and it's the worst possible development class or video or book you've read you will still get something from it yeah. right you will there's yeah. always one little kernel of knowledge or, or thing not to do or thing to do that you will pick up and so i think that i'm just a sponge i watch other people i pick up from from other people, I journal so I can record what happens and I can go back and refer to it. And a lot of times I don't remember stuff, even if it's huge stuff. Sometimes I can't remember everything. When I write those things down, it really helps me to go back and refer to them. So that's very, very helpful. Um, and then I would just say, like, just again, being open to trying new things, not being afraid. Like, so for example, one of the things that I do is double handed spirit drawing. And spirit drawing is when I pick up the pen and I just let it do whatever it wants. Kind of a form of scrying or but mediumship. You're doing this though with you're like in an ambidextrous way. Yeah, I use both hands to draw spirit drawings, and uh, and it was one of those things where I was already doing spirit drawings with just one hand, and I had seen somebody else on a on a video doing it. And I thought, oh, I wonder if I could do that. And on a live, I just picked up another pen and started doing it. And now I can only do it that way. I have a hard <laughs> no. time using one hand. And what was so interesting about it was as I was saying about development is a lot of people were saying, Oh, I wish I could do that. I, I want to try that. And I'm thinking, why wouldn't you try it? It's a pen and paper. <laughs> <What's the deal? laughs> right. You'd be wrong. You There's can no try wrong. that right now. <laughs> well, I'm not serious. No, what yeah. are people interviewing? It's like, I, I've yeah. tried it, but I'm terrible at it. And I'm thinking, how could you be terrible at it? There's no right. There's no book on how to do it. You just yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I always tell people just do it. Who cares if it's wrong or you don't like it, don't do it again. Like I couldn't do runes. I got a really beautiful set of runes. I couldn't, I couldn't connect with them. Hmm. So I don't do runes at this point. It could change. I love how just like open you are. Like, I don't know that just that alone is really inspiring to me. Like, well, thank you. Just try it is like the theme yeah, well, of my life. Well, <laughs> like, this idea that you're going to so open cool. a portal and you can't turn back and some demon's going to jump through the portal and like <laughs> shave your head in your sleep. I don't know. What, where are these stories of Hollywood? The head, I don't know. Head, I'm fine. Eyebrows. No, I need my eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that, that, that kind of idea, I think if you go into it with fear, you are going to invite scary things. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, that's, I, that's, I mean, a Ouija board is a perfect example of that type of thing. People play a Ouija board, hey, look at going to happen. And usually happens. something will. Yeah. That's normally not how it works. Right. Right. So, mm -hmm. Real quick, just because I think for our listenership, if they're like, um, well, we haven't heard the word scrying yet. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. So if you wouldn't mind giving us a definition of what scrying is and what f some forms of that are. Sure, sure. Absolutely. And it's funny because I originally, again, this is a recent lesson, recent lesson, like in the last hmm, three weeks. Oh, wow. Month. Um, scrying is when you use something to focus. So that you can visualize or see some type of communication. So, for example, scrying would be staring into a mirror or a bowl of water or a crystal ball. That's scrying. Or pulling from a, a, a thing full of um, charm, pulling a charm out. Or reading even tea leaves in a sense of scrying. Um, 
spirit drawing, I guess, is a form of scrying. I didn't know that. I was calling it scribing, but it's a form of scrying also. The pen mm -hmm. is allowing a message to come through without me being very conscious of it. And so um, I wake up scrying. <laughs> Hey, Lauren I wakes up crying I'm sometimes. Gonna, so that's. I know, okay. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is, it, it, I didn't know that that was called scrying. And then somebody said, "Oh, you're scrying," and I said, "Oh, that's not scrying." They said, "No, that is." And I looked up, sure enough. So now I'm using the proper technology. <laughs> I, as I said, I'm always learning. I'm always developing. And yeah. now I've learned and developed that scrying is also a term for doing what I do. That's cool. As as okay. I, yeah. I bought. I still haven't tried it myself, but I did out of curiosity. I bought an obsidian scrying like mirror i guess i have it right here Hold right on. on it can be very interesting oh, it's dusty it's not good but it's oh and it's got <laughs> oh, fingerprints cool. all over it yuck but <laughs> well, the kids cool. probably picked it up at some point yeah, too for sure yeah but hey, I, haven't, that's so cool. I haven't like used it yet just because i feel like oh man I don't, I don't really know how to do this my plan and was to like kind of meditate while staring into it i know you're supposed to kind of like go into yeah. the zone you know while you're doing that and see what right right but Right. Be like Molly, um, just try it. I should just try it. I haven't even tried it yet. It's well, just sitting on my desk. <laughs> you're not wrong to want to be relaxed. That's the main state is re relaxation. And yeah. so um, there is a really good free, pretty much, on YouTube. Uh, if you've ever heard of, of Silva Method, S-I-L-V-A, Silva. Silva. Um, you, sometimes if you ever watch me on a live, I do a three, two, one breathing countdown. He teaches you ways to relax and connect. It's, he's, it's a very interesting story. I'm not going to get into it, but definitely worth looking into um it might help you um i tried mirror scrying one time about three years ago i think uh and what it was was i had gotten something in my eye and i got really close to the mirror and i was staring in my eye staring 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 and all of a sudden i started seeing things sort of spinning <laughs> and, I went, Whoa! and i thought maybe i was i didn't know what it was it scared me for thought i'm like passing out like what's happening yeah here? yeah and as i'm looking at myself I start seeing in my eye and I see this tunnel and, and I start seeing like all sorts of visions. And I went, what? Like, cause I wasn't trying to do it. Yeah. <laughs> caught me on guard. I'm like, <laughs> I know that was the end of it. And I haven't done it really since to be honest with you, because I kind of felt like I want to do it. But like you said, I want to be in the right state in the right place where it's quiet and not being interrupted. And I've had a moment to meditate and all these things. Yeah. Not trying to get um, something so out I, of your eye work, also. Yeah. <laughs> What? <laughs> and also not trying to just get something out of your eye where <laughs> you have a different yeah, well, like <laughs> goal. I wasn't doing it on purpose. That's yeah. why I caught me on guard. Now, if I'd been purposely doing it, I wouldn't, it wouldn't have scared me at all. It yeah. Been, okay. That's what's supposed to happen. But at the point I wasn't ready for it. That's so, wild to just see yeah. all that stuff happening. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I was like, Whoa, wait, wait, Whoa. Yeah. That's too <laughs> unexpected. <laughs> right. Totally. So what so, kind of, uh, what kind of information, when you do your, your like ambidextrous, uh, uh, scribing, scrying, scribing, scrying, what, what, you want to call it? Yeah. Writing, drawing, whatever. what are you, what kind of information do you get out of that? Like what, how does it present to you? Well, uh, I'm still experimenting with it to be honest yeah. with you. I've even been a blindfolded before. Um, and it, and it worked pretty well blindfolded as well. Um, but what it can be several things like the other night I did a live and I did it more like a form of mediumship. So what I did was someone would say, I want to hear from my son. All right. And so I, I just breathe. Like I said, this three, two, one countdown I do. And then I focus on the person who asked for a moment and the name of the person that they want me to contact. This is how I do mediumship too, pretty much. And then I just took the pens and I let them do whatever. Mm -hmm. And in her case, she said, it's Halloween. I was on Halloween. She says, my son loved Halloween. I don't know anything about her son. All I got was the first name. I don't know his age. I don't know this woman. I just get a name and the person. And I started drawing and it ended up, I drew like these arches and then this box. And I knew right away, I said, this is a happy meal. <laughs> I'm drawing a happy meal. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she says, oh, he loved uh, chicken nuggets. That he was a obsessed with happy meals he had to have every toy and halloween was his favorite because you would get that bucket remember you could take home and reuse oh my gosh yeah so things like that will come through sometimes or sometimes it will be an actual person uh you know uh, uh they'll just say anything that comes through and i'll go fine and i don't know mm -hmm. so i just let it draw and a lot of times most of the time they will get a person they know now it doesn't have to be somebody who passed it doesn't have to be and sometimes it will be symbolic. It'll be something symbolic. Sometimes it's an animal, a pet. Um, but oftentimes, um, you know, I, I have no idea what I'm drawing and they know. As soon as they look at it, they go, oh, that was my mom's cat 
or, oh, wow, that's weird. You drew a sink. I just repaired my sink or whatever it might be. Okay. So, and it can be that weird. Yeah. So you're, I was assuming that like, okay, okay, okay. You know, uh, like uh, you, have you seen like Tyler Henry? He's always doing the scribbling, right? Yep. Um, the scribbles don't mean anything. It's clearly like bringing something through to him. Like it's just energy in his so mind's eye. for him to connect. Yeah. But in your case, is the actual, what you're writing actually part of it? Yes, but <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. Cause I love Tyler Henry, by the way. He's yeah, one of the few too. on television that I am like hundred percent on board with him. He's yeah. very much like I do. I love him. He's so cool. And I think he's fabulous. <laughs> yeah. uh, but what I was going to say is it's funny because when I, I said to you, they don't have to necessarily be people that have transitioned on. Right. Mm-hmm. But the time. When it's a spirit, guide, energy, whatever you want to call it, or someone who's passed on, it comes out very frenetic looking. There's a lot of, excuse me, I said pet, didn't I? <laughs> a lot of cross hatching, my dog, like cross hatching, scribbling, that kind of stuff. It looks very frenetic. There's a lot of scribbling, scratching, you know, that kind of thing. Even I grip the paper. A few times. Oh, wow. Something that's not in the past, not on the other side, so to speak, it looks pretty clear. So that's how I can kind of tell too pretty cool that is so interesting yeah i mean i'm sure that plays into like the concept of like different vibrations and different levels of existence and stuff like that oh man yes now another part of that additional part of it's really cool is i've done it with two colors of pens like a red and a blue pen so you can see the two different things that i'm doing because i'm not doing them exactly sometimes you'll see in tandem they're doing this both hands are doing the same thing Mm -hmm. sometimes one in the right corner doing something the left hand's on the bottom doing something else and i don't know what it's doing um but the cool thing about it is I had a viewer. So the person said, I, I put on 3D glasses and the picture, it was a picture of a dog. I did red and blue and it was just a post I did. And they said, it looked 3D. And I said, oh gosh, I got to get some 3D glasses. Yeah. Maybe something else. Whoa. I don't know. I was going to ask you too. That's if you've awesome. ever like <laughs> If you're right and if your left and right hands are doing something like that are in coordination with each other. If you like overlaid it and it made one image kind of thing. Yeah. But that's what 3D would do tried, too. You know, I've never tried to fold it, but I should. That yeah. would be cool. That is cool. Uh, but yeah, usually they don't, they're not, you know, fully symmetrical anyways. But sure. yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. That would be neat. I, I, you know, like, like ideas like that are things I will try. I'm like, why not? I'll fold it now. See what it looks like. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I use color. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I use pens. Sometimes pencils. You know, I just never know what yeah. I'm going to use. I've even tried clay. I didn't do great with the clay. I have any better clay than that, but That's so fascinating to like not know what you're drawing and then look down and be like, Isn't that weird? What did I create? Oh, this means something to you. Yeah, I have. (laughs) It's weird because it always looks like scribbles in the beginning. And then it like, and I speed the videos up. If you ever watch my videos, I post those, I speed them up because they're long. You know, sometimes they're 10 minutes of me drawing. Nobody wants to listen to me draw for 10 minutes. (laughs) And it's weird because it looks like it's just growing. You know, it's just like expanding on the page. Like it's just developing as I draw. It's really wild. I've Whoa. tried, I've tried to like do the scribble thing before or like just to see like automatic writing. Mm-hmm. Never, I never really had any luck with that, but I'm starting to think I didn't try for long enough after what <laughs> you're saying. You have to relax and trust yourself. That's all really like, just let it do whatever, you know? And, and if it looks like scribble, so what? Do it a bunch of times still it doesn't look like scribble. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what, how it works. You also, this is like switching gears a little bit. Sure. You, um, call yourself the finder of lost items yeah totally so what's that about you like you are able to know where someone like if someone's missing something they contact you it it blows my mind (laughs) okay i still like (laughs) i can't believe i do this like every time i get a success story like some exactly and exactly where i I turn to my husband i say can you, can you believe this? I don't know anything but their name. I, I know nothing about these people. <laughs> That's like, so how funny. Do, how do we do this? Like, yeah. I can't explain. I can't. I mean, I know, what I, I know how I do it, but I don't know why I can do it. How do you do it? <laughs> so let me explain what it is. Holy yes. or find lost items is exactly what it sounds like. I help people find lost items using remote viewing techniques. Mm-hmm. And I say techniques because I use some mediumship sometimes, some psychic ability. And most of it is I actually go to where that thing is. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what, I see, smell, feel, hear, taste around that item. Sometimes mediumship will come in in a sense that, so example, if you lost, let's say your engagement ring that belonged to your grandmother, um, the grandmother might come in and say to me, oh, you know, tell her this and give me even sometimes a memory uh, or when that person lost the item, like they might give me clues. 
but most of the time I actually sort of in a way become the item and I see where it is. I can feel it, see it, smell it, the position it's in, what it's near. Uh, it always feels weird when I tell people because I really know nothing and it seems like such a shot in the dark because I'll say things like, like the last one I just did, I said, I see a, a taupe canvas open container. Like, I don't know if it's a storage box, a bag, but it looks about this big, you know, and I said, and it's like this taupe or tan canvas. Sure enough, she posted a video. She found her thing. It was an ID she was missing for voting on the floor. And, and she rolled the camera up and you can see that exact thing I saw sitting on her dresser. I, I could have been to her house. <laughs> oh, my God. This person. So what? I know it's real. Yeah. I know it's real. I have like probably, I don't know, I'd say 50 testimonies. Oh, my at least. God. <laughs> and this isn't to brag and pat my shoulder and oh, I'm so great. It's more, I'm just so excited. Who gets to help this many people? In no, their that's, uh, yeah. I, yeah. Who gets to help somebody find that item that belonged to their grandmother or their, their deceased loved one or their most important stuffed animal or their favorite cat or what? Who gets to help people find those things? Yeah. Oh, I that's can't, I, so awesome. I can't wait to lose something. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my mind a long time ago, and I cannot. Find it. And the irony of it all is, I lose things all the time. Really? And you can't figure out where they are? I have started using Foley on myself. Oh That's my the gosh. only way I can find things now. <laughs> my husband thinks it's hilarious. I'll go, I can't find it. I'll go, Foley, Foley, and I'll walk out of the room. <laughs> okay, all right. I'll let you do your thing. <laughs> oh, hold on. So, so, so you brought up a, a question for me. Um, so I've, I'm a great, I'm a, I'm, I'm an experimenter, but I don't have a lot of, uh, attention span. So I, I experiment with things. And I, I run away. Um, <laughs> yeah. I have played with like an attempt to remote view stuff before and right? like, there's a, a lot of practice stuff online and you know, yep. for babies like me. <laughs> and one of the things they're always doing is like needing, you need to know the coordinates not necessarily what you're looking for but like some kind of coordinates not like yeah. a not like a location necessarily but right right are you using the item itself as the coordinates like do you need to know as much about the item as possible and then you you jump into that trance yeah that's a great question because i guess technically i'm not really, really remote viewing in that truest sense right that, like russell targ <laughs> right 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 i get what you're talking about and i've never actually tried that i would like to try that actually that would be cool we should definitely maybe try that sometime yeah. but but what I, I call it reverse psychometry. Psychometry is when you hold an item and then you give the information about the item as you hold it. And I right. do that as well. Yeah. I think it's the opposite. So I'm getting all the information. I'm getting a biography of the item, like where it came from, like who gave it to you and how they relate to you. That's usually what I ask. So my grandmother on my dad's side, when gave me this for my birthday. Okay. So now I got the vibe and I kind of connect in a way. Like I, I almost relate to myself. Like, okay, I got something from my birthday from my grandma. Okay. That's how I felt. Like for a split second, I sort of relate to myself uh -huh. so I can feel that feeling. You like feel it and in your body. Like, yeah. And then I, I connect to the person. So mm -hmm. then I got to also connect to that person like I do when I do mediumship. Their name usually is all I need. And then um, I need them to describe the item so I can visualize. Because people don't give me good descriptions. I find things, but it's not what they were looking for. <laughs> I had a girl look for a wallet. She didn't describe the wallet well to me, and I found her wallet, but it wasn't the wallet she was trying oh to find. Oh, my gosh. That's what? so funny. Okay? Yeah. That has happened many times. The other thing I have to tell you <laughs> is if the thing has been stolen or is completely long gone, destroyed, stolen in another country, never going to find it, I pick up nothing. Oh. Whoa. Nothing. Now, if a relative has it, even if they stole it, I usually can pick it up. Oh, look at you. You're destroying relationships everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never do. I'm very careful. Yeah. But I'm saying it's very interesting. And I'm guessing that's because of that vibration. Because yeah. I'm guessing if it's my sister who has it, her vibratory nature is probably very similar to mine in some way. Or like, yeah, the connection or something. But if it's like a stranger to guess. that I person, sure. yeah. maybe that's different. So, yeah. So in a sense, it's not using corn. Now I bet now I have done some remote viewing work. I have practiced with it and I know what he's talking about where they give you court, like the military, right? They yeah. give you coordinates and then you tell them what you see. Right. I haven't had that opportunity yet. And that would be a really fun experiment. I think there's a lot do. of stuff on the internet where you just like look stuff up. Like there's tests. Oh, there's yeah, even I've apps done that for too. it. Yeah. 
Um, but I think it would be more exciting to do, to do it like on a live where somebody's saying to me, okay, here's the coordinates. And then that's right. And then me just doing it. That's very get. fun. Oh, you should yeah, do that. Yeah. I'll tune in. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this brings Let's up another question for me. Um, I'm always, I've always been curious by the concept of like haunted objects and it doesn't make, it hasn't really ever made sense to me. I understand right. everyone says, Oh, like uh, for example, I have my, on my desk over here as a fun decoration. I have my original VHS copies of the, the original star Wars trilogy. I just like, I like to look at it. It's there. Right on. So yeah. if I like, let's say I passed and I like really liked that. I, it meant something to me. Let's assume like in spirit form, I'm like, Oh man, I, I, I wonder where my, my VHSs are. <laughs> Yeah. And am I like, in a sense, like doing what you do, you say you like kind of become the object a little bit and you see where the object is. It sounds to me like you're almost talking about like how people have the idea of an attachment. Yeah, but I don't, so, like, I don't get it. <laughs> help, help yeah, okay. So like the idea that some people have is like, and you've seen movies about this, like they buy this watch and they get it home and there's an attachment. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's haunted and this watch all of a sudden everything in your life falls apart because this crazy watch that has a spirit attached to it. Yeah. It really works like that. But what I think it does is you sort of rub off on it, you know, like your energy sort of rubs off on that. Hmm. And so uh, I have a bracelet, for example, that I bought it. I, I'm a thrifter. I love thrifting. And I bought this really pretty silver bangle one time at a thrift store. And the first time I wore it, all kinds of weird stuff happened. I never attributed it to this bracelet. Hmm. And then it seemed like every time I wore it, I started to notice a pattern of, I don't remember what it was. Something weird was happening every time I wore it. And so it, it occurred to me, like, whoever wore this before probably also had similar problems. And so I'm resonating, kind of like the tuning fork. If this tuning fork is on a C and I hit this tuning fork to C, this one's going to vibrate. Yeah. It's science. It's resonation. So if you have those Star Wars movies and you love them, and then let's say you pass and I end up with them for some reason, I don't know you. Um, and I decide, you know, oh, I'm going to play these movies. I may feel something when I pick those up. And just go, oh, that was weird. I felt a little bunny there for a second, mm -hmm. you know, or I heard something for a second and you brush it off. But when you're somebody like me, I don't brush that stuff off. I right. notice it. Yeah. yeah. So um, I do have a lot. I love antiques. I have a lot of them. And, and like that autograph book, I wouldn't call it an attachment, but because there was so much information about the person I talked about in the autograph book and the photographs, I made a really solid connection to that guide spirit, whatever you want to call it. Um, so he was manifesting. That's okay. how poltergeists work. You Ooh, know, it's the same yeah. thing. When you have a very negative energy in a home. You will see negative things happen. And that's what a poltergeist is. And it's just energy. It's not necessarily a, a demon coming into your house saying, I'm going to cause trouble. It's an energy. So I just saw Tyler. It's not funny. You brought Tyler Henry. I was literally watching him maybe an hour ago for a second. He was talking about this. Okay. So um, when you have teenagers in the house, hormonal people in the house, often there will be poltergeist activity. Yeah. Because of that weird energy going on. Right. So when you have an item, if you ever get an item and you believe it's haunted, has an attachment, so to speak, or is causing some kind of thing, as soon as you identify, you can pretty much end it. Right, right, right. Pretty much end it. Yeah. Just by saying, oh, I, I can tell this bracelet's causing an issue. And that's usually end it. For me. For me. That's been my experience. No, that but makes sense. The belief is, oh, everything's going to fall apart because this bracelet, I got to bury it in my backyard. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, know, yeah. Dance around in the moonlight and goat leggings. Okay, well then. <laughs> You and give it, it to the next to person it. and the curse moves to someone else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? So, oh man, like, hold on. I just got to point out for a second. In 10 years, with when our kids get a little older, this place is going to go off. <laughs> This, this place is going it's off. Two little, two little teens. A couple, like, couple freaks. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Our kids are two and, and six. So yeah. they're, they already have big, big emotions and stuff. It's so. going to be bananas. <laughs> He's going to be wearing his goat leggings. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought he was going to say. I put my goat leggings on tonight. <laughs> but yeah. so <laughs> like with Mr. Striever, uh -huh. so that was just like, you because there was so much energy and emotion all the things like put into that book like mm -hmm. he was just showing up i mean not like causing not like wreaking havoc or anything but like no 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 you know dimming your salt now. lamp and turning on your microwave and stuff he loved electronics he would play with electronics but what i was even 
live telling the story one time and my light ring blew up. I mean, oh my gosh. Oh what? my gosh. That's funny. But I had to buy a new one. When you had it away, like it was like, <laughs> you don't hear from Mr. Streaver anymore. No, I don't have it right now. And I haven't had any, I packed it recently. Um, but before uh, the last live I did where I talked about it, uh, I think we brought out the spirit box. That's right. I brought out a spirit box and I did a demonstration of the spirit box with the autograph book and he came through. He did. He absolutely did. I remember now. I still remember what happened when we brought that out last time. We did a spirit box session with it and he did come through and he ran my battery down and did a couple other things. <laughs> we, we haven't talked about a spirit box on, on the show yet. So would you, would you mind uh, describing what a spirit box is? Okay. So uh, there's different models of it. I have the basic TS. I think it's like a TS738 or something. I don't know what it's called. Um, spirit boxes are a transistor radio. I mean, that's really what they are. And they are used a lot on paranormal investigations, which I've also done before. Uh, and what they do is they scan through very quickly through stations, free frequencies, mm -hmm. which is what spirit is, a frequency and an energy, right? And using that information and those sounds and that static, it can form words. And so um, you turn it on, it'll sound like a radio, like, like a very staticky radio station. And then you hit the sweep button and it'll start going through the stations really fast. You can go forward, backward, AM, FM. It doesn't matter. They're all different. You experiment with them, turn them faster, slower, whatever. And then um, a lot of people like to use what they call the Estes method, which is somebody puts the headphones on with the spirit box going and blindfolds themselves. So they don't know what's going on. Another person asks questions of spirit and so forth. And then the person wearing this, the headphones will just say what they're hearing. And nine times out of 10, it will coordinate with the questions that are being asked, whether they can hear, they can go in a whole other room and ask questions. They don't have to even be in the same room. Yeah. There's so something it can be used like that oh. for paranormal investigation specifically for people that maybe don't have ability that would like to hear messages, right? When I've used Spirit Box, it acts like a tool for mediumship. So I will start out with the Spirit Box and then I usually will get mediumship for it. Like I'll hear a name. And then someone in the live will say, that sounded like my dad. And I'll say, all right, let's do some mediumship with your dad. And then I just turn the spirit box and put it away and off we go. I don't love it for me. It's not my favorite form of communication. It is a form. I don't, it's hard to hear. It's very hard to hear when you use those. Yeah. Um, there are improved versions of them, I think. And there's even apps, I think, that do it that are better. Mm. The caution with the apps for me is your phone stores a lot of information. Right. Yeah. So it could easily pick up information from your phone. So I don't know how much I trust those apps. Yeah. Yeah. There's something really creepy sounding about the static, the <laughs> static and like little blips of, of words and, and stuff. Like and it Lauren knows how it sounds because it would come as a surprise to nobody that I own one. So it's right over here. <laughs> um, yeah. And Frank yeah. has tried it out before and I'm like, I don't like how that's, it's just creepy sounding. I even bought a it little, is creepy it's just sounding. Sa it's it just static, sounding. but like, I don't know. I bought a little Faraday bag to put it in to like reduce, like, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to nice. reduce interference. Yeah. It's very yeah. fun. But I, we've only done it a few times. I don't, I don't think they're super, like, I don't, they're not my favorite form of communication. I'm just, just going to say that. But yeah. I think for somebody who's novice that's doing paranormal investigations, they might find it a useful tool if they have a partner to help them with it. Yeah. But I wouldn't go out and buy one just because you think you're going to talk to spirits because you're not going to get really good cohesive messages. I yeah. don't think. Right, sometimes right. you will once in a great while, but it doesn't happen. Right. And it then sometimes like there is, year. there's a lot of room for error in those too. Like you hear stuff that's not there. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was at the beginning of our, our journey here. And you were like, I'm doing it. I'm getting a spirit box and a Faraday cage. And I'm like, I don't know what's happening. I don't like any of it because <laughs> you think you're a ghostbuster. I am a ghostbuster. I'm a, I'm a well, ghost. I'm a ghost. Taking truster. Away the, I'm sorry. You're taking away the human um, element of it. You're yeah. letting it do its own. That's why people don't like Ouija boards because they feel yeah. like they don't have control. Which, right. Yeah. Right. Right. You, you do. But anyway, it feels like it's just doing its own thing. And that's scary to people if you're not used to that. Yeah. You haven't, yeah. we, that has been sitting there for a while since uh, working on our intuition. Yeah, we haven't used <laughs> the spirit it. Spirit box has, oh, it, has it gone may not be quiet. the right time for you. Is so you're on this boat, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I just love. Is just there a stone's throw from J Lo? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I can see the island where she lives. That's cool. Right out my window. Nice. <laughs> Does it feel like 
energetically more quiet being out there or like I don't know or or, a lot really different okay yeah it's just like um you know like when you you know you sleep in your bed comfortable you're used to it and then you go stay like at your mom's and you sleep in the bed at your mom's and you've slept in that bed before but it feels a little bit different Mm -hmm. you know like sometimes like wow it's kind of like that so the energy is slightly different Mm -hmm. uh it's comfortable for me being on the water is more conductive for sure i get less paranormal activity here and more uh psychic input here oh and mediumship input here Uh when i'm on land i tend to get more paranormal activity and paranormal communication i'm not sure why interesting I, i don't know why do you ever like sense energy from like the <laughs> I'm so curious as to where this is going. Davy Jones. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, either Lauren's about to ask you ocean, if you talk to the dolphins. I, uh, yeah, like <laughs> the, <laughs> oh, no. The ocean, like the mammals of the sea. She's not Aquaman. Well, I, I do see a lot of them for sure. Yeah. And uh, you know, I've I've actually sat out. I actually posted a couple videos where there were times I was sitting on deck, like you know, working through an issue in my mind and out jumps a dolphin. You That's know, awesome. out of the blue, you That's know, so cool. That kind of stuff, a lot of signals like that. Um, as far as picking up stuff, no, but um, a lot of my uh, mooring field friends around here, a few of them have had readings from me. Sorry, what, your, your what field? Mooring field. I'm on a mooring, I'm on a mooring ball. M-O-O-R-I-N-G. Oh, okay. So it's like an anchor, like a permanent anchor that floats there. Okay, got That's it. That's what we're connected to. Uh, for the, in the, like a parking lot in the ocean. Okay. For, oh for us land lovers, it's a parking lot in, okay. the, in the water. Got it. Yeah. So it's like other boats. Like I have a neighbor that's about 50 yards on another ball. They call it on the ball. Near us. Floating. Okay. So, Whoa. Yeah. So, and Ugh. we move, I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm moving all the time. I We're feel turning, so spinning, rocking, about that. all this stuff. I'm watching the, the uh, sun through the window behind you that's moving around. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you can even see there's a... a Ooh, look at that. Oh, what, I feel seasick right now. <laughs> no, chill out. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I That's so, I like, the, just thinking about it. That's so... Yeah. <laughs> Well, I was starting to say that I met a lot of people here, my neighbor, and honestly, um, they resonate really strong when I'm around them. Like, you know, you say like, oh, do you pick up stuff when you're near people? Not usually. I try to not allow that. Yeah. But for whatever reason, the people that live out here, I can feel them. Like when I'm talking to them or standing near them, I can feel a lot. Wow. I pick up a lot from them. And I don't know if it's the relaxed atmosphere of living on a boat or the type of people that would live on a boat, or like you said, being near water. Mm-hmm. But I find that my neighbors, the people that I associate with on a daily basis around here, I really pick up a lot from them. I can get right near them and I can say, oh gosh, they had a bad night. Like I can feel it. And that's not normal for me. So I think that's a, that's one aspect that is different here. I wonder, wow. I would imagine that because you only have so many neighbors that like the, like you're always hyper aware of where each other where everybody oh, yeah. is yeah. so like you're oh, more, yeah. there's fewer people to connect to it's less ADD for someone as intuitive yeah. as you are yeah 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 that's kind of cool and I'm definitely an ADHD person <laughs> aren't we all aren't we all these <laughs> days like, I didn't notice <laughs> I feel like the highly uh, yeah. sensitive people just the more people we've been interviewing they're like well that's my ADHD <laughs> like yeah well ADHD every person, and autism in my opinion are very spiritual I think that I mean I was late diagnosed honestly um, but I do think they're more superpowers. I really do. It's just a different way of communicating. And it is not a deficit. It is the actual opposite. And that's why mediums and psych- psychics are so good at what we do wi- when we have ADHD. Because we do. We notice every nuance, every detail. We don't miss a, a thing. Yeah. And, and and I even have a superpower. My husband is the same way. I have a superpower where I can predict when something's going to fall over, you know, knock off the table, whatever. And I'll grab midair. Like, faster than... <laughs> And my husband does it too. We both do this thing where we can grab midair, boop, 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 like the matrix. Oh my like God. I see it motion. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's ADHD. Oh my gosh. That reminds me, I Lauren, did. we we went to a, Lauren and I went um, like wine tasting two weekends ago. I remember our daughter knocked over one of the glasses. It was a wine glass. Oh yeah. And it, it, you know, wine glasses tip over quickly. I caught it before it hit the table. Yeah. And even yeah. the, the guy who was like serving us was like, wow. I 
I'm like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't have, know. I literally have ninja <laughs> reflux. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. It is a hyper awareness. I can throw something in a land right where I throw it. That's awesome. Wow. That's, That's awesome. awesome. See, you should have been yeah. a basketball star. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> only I'm five feet tall. I don't <laughs> like kitty basketball. Maybe <laughs> I'm a small medium. What can I say? <laughs> All right. Well, medium at large. Oh, my <laughs> oh God. Look at I love that. that. I have a t-shirt. That's ah. great. <laughs> I'm going to back up a little bit here. You had mentioned that when you were younger, your parents were, they were trying to figure out what was wrong with you more right. than anything. Did they ever come around? Um, my biological father did not, mm-hmm. um, doesn't take it seriously. And it actually ended up kind of being the final nail in the coffin to be a little personal, but that was part of why I don't speak to my dad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My family was not religious. It was, I grew up in a Jewish family, but certainly not, I didn't go to temple on a regular basis. I didn't, you know, none of that kind of stuff. Like it was just more, you know, our, my upbringing. Um, my parents, my mom and stepdad at first were a little bit like, Oh, now what's she doing? <laughs> 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 when I finally came out of the spiritual closet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they have also seen evidence and it makes sense to them now as to why I was doing what I was doing. And I have actually, I hate to use the word proven because I wasn't trying to prove to them what I do, but I have proven to them through things I've done for them that Mm. shows them that I have ability. Right. And the hardest nut to crack, I would say would definitely be my stepdad. Um, he is, you know, a vet. He's very serious. He's an engineer. He's very black and white, very logical. Mm -hmm. And last time I visited, he was asking me about what I do and how it works. Like he couldn't understand it at all. It was like a foreign language to him. Yeah. And I was trying to explain it to him. And as I gave him some examples of some things that, like I said, something about a hat that was sitting on the desk. And I said something about a computer and how I affect electronics and things like this. And his eyes just got wider and wider. And as it turns out, when I, the things I was using for examples were things that had just happened to him. Oh. <laughs> so he That's so at great. Me did you talk to your mom about this? And I said, what? And he goes, what you just talked about that hat and what you said. I'm like, no. And he says, oh, wow. Now I see what you're talking about. So wow. Spirit helped me on that one. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, no kidding. I was like, how am I going to ever explain this? This guy's going to think I'm a nutball. <laughs> yeah. And I think he gets it now. Like, yeah. And not that he, and I almost even wonder that a lot of the people I feel that resist, like, don't believe it. It's because they've had experiences and it scared the hell out of them. Yeah. So they figure complete denial is the way mm-hmm. to go. Just like what's happening in politics right yeah yeah <laughs> people are so hateful it's like wait what are you hiding from dude yes <laughs> that's right. it. yeah what are oh you hiding gosh. from i know 100 so that's, that's, that, that's yeah that's, that's, that's totally it a, a lot of them it's it's just it's just pure fear and they want to just yeah. deny as as much as possible i like, mean for a lot of people, no possible way that could be real the that's concept that like everyone is like interconnected in some way that where other people can like maybe know what you're going through without you being explicitly told scares people i understand everyone's mm-hmm. like right. desire for right. privacy and like you know as long as you're doing this stuff ethically that you still retain your privacy but every time i meet somebody and i tell them what they i do which for a while i wouldn't because i was worried about what the response was going to be sure mm-hmm. i either get to prove it which i think is really rude by the well, way yeah yeah <laughs> yeah like I'm thinking, yeah. I, don't, yeah. I don't just walk up to people and start bringing, you know, do it. That's not cool. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I can't even do that really. But, um, but what I always, what always blows my mind is they will always mean to say, I don't believe in that stuff. Uh-huh. And then tell me a story about something that happened <laughs> that was crazy. They can't explain. I don't believe that. But one time, every time, yeah. oh my I God. truly believe the non-believers believe more than I do. I think something happened that scared them or they had an experience. And they just shut it off. Yeah. 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 And now they're naysayers. Right. Yeah. So, oh, that's fascinating. <laughs> when you're ready, it'll. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't have to prove shit. Yeah. <laughs> like... Well, that's like somebody saying I'm a mechanic and I say, great, fix my car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, do it free. Oh, okay. Even better. Yeah, that's I, all... I really want to do it free. That's also, I have, a, I, have a, I have a PhD. Oh, I, can you look at my mole? <laughs> As I did, I have a. I have a PhD in <laughs> astronomy. There is, well, it, it, that's so funny. It, People want to like, you know, that speaks, that speaks to the Hollywood uh, idea of like walking into the hairdresser and suddenly going, excuse me, is your mother a redhead with five 
toes on one foot and four on the other. And does she, does she like cannoli? I mean, that's a piece of shit. Sorry, my language. It would take the F out of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because people think that's how it works. Right. It doesn't work like yeah. that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Those are like and the unethical. Ethical to walk up yeah. to somebody and just mm-hmm. start spouting stuff off. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so funny. I really like that character. Though. I love that character. <laughs> yeah, I gotta poof my hair up, but I'm wearing a hat right now. Wait, I want to see you do saw, a live the character. where you're just in that character the whole time. I should have dressed up like that for Halloween. <laughs> oh my, my gosh. I don't know why just I... Do a whole big thing. Okay, <laughs> 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 do a horse shack. She's from, um... talking to me right now. She's talking to me right now. She's talking to me right now. Do you understand? <laughs> I have to give you this message. <laughs> oh my God. And not to say these people aren't talented and don't have ability. I'm not saying that by any means. Yeah. And when I when I become famous <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in Hollywood. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I hope I don't have to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. I hope I don't have to do stuff that looks like it's out of integrity. I don't like that. I would rather do a format like Tyler does where it's more organic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't know who he's meeting. He yeah. hasn't had time to research. He just shows up and does what he does. Ugh. I love how he doesn't know who celebrities are too. <laughs> so, yeah, he's, well, and and, and so, speaks to my age because obviously at my age, I know everybody he's looking at <laughs> as long as they're over the age of forty. Uh, <laughs> half time, he'll go. Oh, I'm talking to Ch- Ch- Chapel Rome or whatever. I'm like, who? Yeah, what? yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the chapel in Rome? What? <laughs> oh, I've been to that one. Yeah, that's funny. Oh my god. Um. So yeah. So. So that's your folks. What about your husband? Where does he land on this? What's what's how was this? How did this go over? So we already knew. And yeah, I was worried that he was going to think I'm a cuckoo bird and it's weird. And, and at first I know it takes some adjusting because when you're with somebody like me, about every 20 minutes, I'll say something like, oh, spirit just told me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. Or, I just saw. Or did you hear that? Or <laughs> never really even happened, you know, or stuff moving around. You know what I mean? Stuff happens around. Me. That's just who it is, who I am. Yeah. And so he's become very used to it. Um, and he thinks it's fabulous. And and you know, the biggest thing that he keeps repeating to me when I get frustrated, when I get overwhelmed, when I get angry, you know, because stuff doesn't always go right. Yeah, yeah. You know, or or things don't turn out the way I always want. He'll say to me, "Think about all the people you're helping, Molly. Think about how you'd feel if somebody did that for you." Aww. And that brings me right back to where he grounds me to the point where I, I, I mean, literally, he's a gift. Yeah. A gift, gift, that's a gift. So sweet. And I appreciate him so much. He that, is amazing. He's getting choked up. That, yeah, that's, that's where it is. He always such, reminds me, you are helping people. Such that's an important beautiful. thing to like keep in mind. Yeah. It's, all, it's all the reason you should be doing anything like this. Ever. And that's when you know you've got like a good partner, too, you know, like someone that lifts you up in that way. Yeah. And that's why every 20 minutes or so I go, oh, hey, Lauren, the spirit is telling me that you should pick up your clothes yeah. off the ground right now <laughs> because our house is a mess. And I'm like, I is it dork when I say stuff like that, but I feel like I have to say it. <laughs> no, <it's, laughs> you know, like I see it over He's like, oh, geez, more feelings. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, that's okay. He's very that's respectful cute. about it. I love that. Yeah. I have another question. I, I assume that you are a very confident person or that you are very confident in, in your abilities because like for someone like me, if I were to do that, I would be so distracted by like what people were thinking of me or like I would be so my attention would be so spread on the mm-hmm. situation I was sitting in. Um, right. I'm very enamored by your ability to like focus on your skill set and, and bring through yeah. what you need to bring through. Yeah. Uh, any advice? It's, it's pretty remarkable. <laughs> It's pretty remarkable because you think about it. I'm seeing, for example, live. All I see is her name. Yeah. I can't see. I can't even tell sometimes it's a man or a woman. The, you know, those little pictures are so small. And yeah. I, mm-hmm. I, I always see the name. I don't know anything about. They could be in Australia. I mean, it. How do you stay focused on, on them um, or their energy only? Or, well, or, or just not get like stuck in your head. Yeah. When I started, I would get a lot of combative energy. So like there'd be three or four spirits coming in at the same time and I didn't know who they belonged to. So it was a little bit scary because I would say, oh, this person da 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 and da 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 And I'd like 30 people going, that's fine. That's for me. That's for me. And they call that spirit led mediumship where people get mm-hmm. on and they just start spouting stuff off and say, that's my grandpa. That's yeah. my mother. You know, whatever. I don't do that. 
I do direct dial up, which is actually far more challenging, by the way. Direct what? I call it direct dial up. So they tell me who they want to talk to. They say, I want to talk to Grandma, you know, Shar. Okay. <laughs> and then I got to focus on Grandma Shar. Now, once in a while, something else will come through, and that's okay. But I think what the, the story is, again, my slogan is know that you know. Right. So just say it. There is no wrong. Even if I tell you something when you're doing mediumship and, you, and the person says, I have no clue what that is. I don't force it on the person ever. And mm-hmm. I don't agree with that either. I don't agree going, you're wrong. It's for you. I, I don't do that. But what I will say is it will make sense to you at some point. Mm-hmm. It will make sense to you, including when I do spirit drawings, anything I do. It will make sense to you. And it does usually at some point will make sense to them. Um, but the problem is for me, in my mind, I am seeing like, you know, when you're swiping through stuff really fast, like you're looking at pictures very fast, you were swiped through like that. Mm-hmm. That's what it's going through my head. I'm swiping. I'm seeing all these images very fast and I have to grab them. Mm-hmm. So they can be random. It could be as random as like one time uh, uh, I saw one of those, those visors that has the fake fuzzy hair on top. I hate those. Things. So ridiculous. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yes. yes. Those are awful. Yeah. They're awful. And, but, I, but I had to say it because I saw it. So I yeah. said, I think I was stupid. But she goes, oh, my God. I have so many pictures of my dad wearing that. Hilarious. He, he would wear that everywhere. It was so embarrassing because he was bald and he thought it was so funny. And he would take it off. And, that, and I'm thinking, you know, I could have just skipped that thing. and said, oh, that's dumb. I'm not going to. Because that's what I used to do. I used to skip weird shit like that. I go, right. oh, that, that was weird. I'm, I'm, I'm going to look like a fool saying that. Yeah. But those are the things that they want to hear. Because those are things. There's no dang way I could know that. Yeah, just because it doesn't so, make sense to you doesn't mean right. It doesn't. So it's make not sense for to me to interpret. All yeah. I am is the conduit. That I am mm-hmm. the medium. I am the thing in the middle that is bringing that message to that person. Yeah, that's all I am. A translator. I'm a spiritual translator, and yeah. that's what you are. So you've got to be able to trust yourself and just, just you just say it. You just say it. It just whatever it is. Every little thought you have, you're gonna spout it out. Write it down. Whatever, and you're gonna be shocked when you see how much you know. Okay, so you got over the count. <laughs> you you have gotten over the the hump of feeling stupid. <laughs> yeah, I did what? You got over the hump of feeling stupid for like saying the weird thing or like um No, I love the weird thing now. Oh see. Yeah. Embrace the weird, you guys. Embrace yeah. the weird thing. Yeah. That's the thing that's gonna be the thing. I would like yeah. I would be like, oh, this thing just popped in my head. Clearly I'm a freak and like I'm thinking of random <laughs> yeah. stuff and, and I would never The common denominator here is that you think a lot of things that you do are stupid. Oh yeah. I have so, 51 episodes of me talking about how dumb I am. <laughs> and like, I need, <laughs> know that you know, yeah, and I need I to know that. that. I know. And, and yeah. honestly, you should experiment with it. Try it. Try just Try with your, you know, family friends. Don't even tell me you're doing it. Just like say, Oh, weird. I just thought about a Pokemon. And then see if somebody goes, I was just playing with my Pokemon. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's mm-hmm. what'll start happening. Those are not coincidence. I mean, they are coincidences. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. coincidence coincide. You're coinciding with something else. There, everyone's had a coincidence. That's not a coincidence. Huh. Yeah, coincide. <laughs> I never thought about that. This is helpful. It's because- a coincidence. It's two incidences happening around the same time that connect in some weird way. That's yeah. a coincidence. Yeah, I think I, I needed to hear that. Mm-hmm. I need to hear that in yeah. a big way. You got something. See? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so much of this has been an abs- absolute pleasure. I've gotten a lot of things, but that was. Oh, good. I'm That's so glad. And I do mentor me. people on occasion. So, you know. Oh, you do mentorship. Well, hold on. Let's yeah. use this as an opportunity to, to let people know, like, where they can find you and, and what services you offer. Yeah. Yeah. So, I miss oh. Molly Knows on <clears throat> TikTok is my biggest following, but I'm also on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I am not on X anymore. Um, Same. No comment. And I'm- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, it is vitriol. Yeah. YouTube mm-hmm. as well. Okay. Um, and then you can always contact me on my website, MissMollyKnows.com. Easy mm-hmm. to remember. And I also have um, a designated Foley address or Finder of Lost Items address. If someone's looking for an item, I don't charge at this point for it. Uh, I do get back to you when I can. It's sort of an experiment. I've been doing it through the mail. I don't know that it's working as well as I'd like it to. I'm not sure yet. Because I don't always hear back the way that I hear back on lives. Mm. But you can still do it. <clears throat> Finder of lost items at yahoo.com. All one word, no cap. If you're missing an item. <laughs> I can't wait to purposely take one of Lauren's items and hide it somewhere. And, just, and, just, and watch yeah, this unfold. Yeah. 
I'm not going to tell her. You'd be able to, to, to televise what I do or, you know, you'd have to like, <laughs> me, and I don't know about that. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You Frank's got an elaborate that. scheme no, I'm going always, on I'm already. scheming all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Almost everybody I've interviewed with, and I've probably had about six different podcasts now that I've interviewed, every single one of them has lost something and, and contacted me. Yes. Oh my. found it. <laughs> yes. At some point. Don't worry, you'll have your chance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, you listen, just put it into the universe. We so. are we are absent minded folk. Thank you for that. <laughs> we will lose something. <laughs> no, but you can give me coordinates and I'll draw something for you if you there want. You go, oh, yeah, right? Too. Yeah. <laughs> See what comes up. Do some remote viewing there. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Molly, thank you so much for hanging out with I us thank today. Thank you. Yeah. This was really fun. Anytime. You just call me just to talk. You don't even have to record it. Perfect. Oh, I, I love, love that. that. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Molly. Adios. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. Thank you for listening. Visit www.clairvoyaging.com for show notes, merch, or just to say hi. If you'd like to support our journey, visit www.buymeacoffee.com backslash clairvoyaging. This has been a production of Wayfeather Media.